Could you comment on the practice of everyday living? You know, many people practice to become skilled at martial arts or some other talent, but rarely do they extend the concept of their practice to become skilled at everyday living. The practice of everyday living instills extraordinary qualities into your ordinary moments. Our main tool of practice is mindful attention to our behaviors. This attentiveness allows us to locate our ground zero for doing things. Mindfulness practice makes people feel more alive, more connected to their actions, and more responsible for their choices. For example, most teenagers view house chores as a waste of their time, so they shun these natural responsibilities. But cleaning up after oneself is a byproduct of living. Taking care of basic responsibilities like washing dishes, taking out the trash, mowing the lawn, ironing clothes, organizing your thoughts and objectives give our life balance. It adds greater meaning to those freedoms we are able to enjoy. Suppose no one washed your dishes, no one sewed your clothes, no one changed the oil in your car, or you never organized your thoughts. How long would it take before your life clogged with the disorganized, dirty, confused, and spent casings of your actions? Life would become foul and come to a halt until you cleaned up. True practice, whether in the dojo or in life, is essentially the act of cleaning up. Are there any restrictions on who can learn the spiritual side of martial arts? Anyone can cultivate inner wisdom through their martial practices. But there first must be some attraction that leads you into this particular room of change. Not everyone at the carnival wants to enter the fun house. And this is also true of the world's disciplines. Not everyone wants to do yoga, martial arts, try biofeedback, or homeopathy, or other meditative or alternative disciplines. The Ferris wheel attracts some, the fun house others. If you have heart trouble, you might wish to avoid skeletons popping out of the dark. Some disciplines challenge your physical limitations, others your intellectual or spiritual limitations. Some martial disciplines are very rugged, but there's enough martial diversity to stimulate many temperaments, body types, and philosophical bents. In American culture, we're mostly restricted by our own distractions. This can make us our own worst enemy and place an interesting spin on the concept of self-protection. What is this thing called self? Why do we need to protect it? Who or what is the real enemy? In my study, I found answers to these questions in mindful practices. Awareness of my own sensations and emotions, observations of other responses to my actions during training, and by directing my thoughts and monitoring my feelings toward resolving or removing myself from unnecessary conflict. We offer a relationship that nourishes hearts, awakens bodies, and stimulates minds. Here you can find an authentic path without the need for games or ego dominance. Our path brings value and meaning into students' lives. It uplifts people in ways that are both visible and practical. I wouldn't want to let this feeling or these results go, if I could grasp them. And as a teacher, if one is going to polish the living blade, that is, the body, it makes sense to polish the character housed within. What do you consider unique about your student body? We're a healthy, functioning, and nurturing family, which is becoming more of a rarity today. Through collective study, we've reached a level of enlightenment about our individual and group dynamics. Our organization functions, functions like a Buddhist sangha or virtuous community. Even though we have a variety of members with diverse lay and religious beliefs, egos are certainly present, but they rarely command center stage. We're also different from many sport clubs, which choose to bond in a feeling of competitive superiority. We're not trying to win a game against others or outsiders. We're simply raising the bar of our own evolution. Kempo's study is ultimately a personal undertaking. We accept others into our arena to nudge us along, to provide support and to offer clear mirroring and encouragement. What keeps you going as a full-time professional teacher of over 40 years? Well, I haven't exhausted my curiosity about the martial arts yet. The more I peer into my discipline, the more compelled I am to look deeper. My wonder for this art and its nourishment is still quite bountiful. 
I feel alive when I'm around others questioning for growth. The dojo is always charged with questions and curiosities, and I'm caught in the flow of everyone else seeking their own harmony. The whole experience reminds me of that deep anticipation of readying yourself to listen to a symphony. As the orchestra slowly draws into a chord, it carries its audience down a river of harmonious sounds. Martial art plays that symphony for me. So it's not where I'm headed, but where I am that keeps me going. Metaphorically, when you're on the right train, train of thought, then it doesn't matter where the train goes. The mystery of the journey makes our lives just as rewarding as its known parts. To strive for authenticity, to engage in meaningful action, and to pass along valuable tools to the younger generation defines the right train for me. Do you still find value in basic punching and kicking? Well, we all kick and punch for many different reasons. To win a trophy, to maintain health, to repel invaders, or to study the larger physical universe through its parallel in the physical body. All or any of these actions can move us up the evolutionary ladder. In Kempo, I kick and punch as a stepping stone to higher functioning. When it comes to advancing ourselves, we could all use a mentor, a parent, coach, teacher, good literature, time alone, anything that can lead us through the rough or unknown parts of our psychic terrain. We need a path through the forest of life's uncertainty and doubt if we're going to ascend up the mountain of truth. We need clear purpose to make our peak life experiences more than just momentary highs. We need our bodies to be healthy, alert, and energetic because our body is our primary vehicle in this life. Thank you for listening.